this is the way. Be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We are studying about a little boy called Nathan from Jerusalem. He was here in America and moved back, and he met a little friend, the greatest friend, and he was so excited because he has a friend, and all he knew was his family. So him and his friend were going to live close together, but his friend, Ali, doesn't know it yet. And then he was studying with his grandfather this night how to put on this five lactiers that they put on their arm. They were working, studying all the things that he needed to know, and the little box that went by the elbow that was put on their left arm if they were right-handed. If they were left-handed, it was put on their right arm. So he had this to put on his head, also on the top of his head, a little case with the Bible verses in them. You see, this is the most important thing for us to learn this truth. So we saw how he learned about this little boy. He learned that he was an Arab boy, and they both knew that they were going to live close together, they hoped, because his mom and dad were going to go and look for an apartment close to where Ali lived. So after they had had their dinner that night, they left to go to eat, and go to look at the apartment, and he stayed with his grandfather. And his grandfather loved him very much. He called him my Kaddish. And he taught him the word of God. And he loved his grandfather and his grandmother. It was so much fun to be here in Israel for them. Because before they came back to Israel, they had met a friend at church. And he showed them that all of the Jews are supposed to come back to Israel to prepare for their Messiah. That is why since 1948, May the 14th at 4 o'clock, Israel became a nation after they had been scattered for over 2,000 years. And now they're all coming back to Israel looking for their Messiah to come. And he has learned this through a lady in America, a lady that taught a happy day club. And everything that she has taught him, he, his grandfather taught him, you must think, son, you must think. This is how he learned everything that she told him. But he wanted to accept Christ, but he couldn't because he didn't want to hurt his grandfather. Now, I'm going to tell all of you, when you hear this story, you will not wait to accept Jesus Christ because today is the day of salvation. There is no other time except while I'm telling you right now. And then we saw in John last week, and we saw also in, J in John 15, verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love you his own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. But if you are a child of God, you cannot hate anyone and this is the lesson that you must learn through this because he tells us in 1 John, 
And this is for every person that is listening. He says, Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. He also says the same thing in John, this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness, even until now. Now this is 1 John 2, verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. This is what the world is. The world hates us because they are under the power of Satan. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Let's love the way these two boys love. And you are going to see in these lessons that this is the greatest need we have today in the world. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise thy marvelous name. We thank thee and praise thee that we have thy divine perfect love. And this must be manifested to those around us. And every person in this whole universe has one supreme need, and that is to know Christ and to manifest Christ to this world. This is our desire as we teach this lesson that every person will do what God commands us to do, to love one another as I have loved you by this shall all men know you are my disciples, if we have love one for another. This is our prayer today, that every person that's listening will call upon thee to save. Call upon Christ to save thee this moment. Just call upon him. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, after they had had their dinner, then... Of course, him and his grandfather were studying. And this was the time when grandfather was starting to, he could see that his grandfather was starting to not feel good the way he did before. Because his grandfather told him he was going to take a nap. Even though he said, don't tell grandmother I'm taking a nap before this close to bedtime. So he could see this with his grandfather, but he didn't want anyone to know that he didn't feel good. So while his grandfather was sleeping, this little boy was going through all that his teacher had taught him. Now you have to listen to this story because this is the most amazing thing. Here he had learned this, what being born again was from his teacher. You must be born again. He had learned that Christ had come and died on the cross. He had learned that he had gone back to heaven. He had learned that there is only one God. You see, the first thing you must know, he is the only true God that we have just heard about. And he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you cannot know any other God that is three and one, and they are all equal. And the thing that you must understand in God's sight, after we become a child of God, we are one. We are one. Now, he says this in John 17 so many times. Now they have all known these things, whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Now, this is John 17, verse 17. 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. They are all equal. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They cannot be separated. Now listen at verse 9. 
Verse 10, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, the only time this is written. Keep through thine own name those which thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. You see, there can be no division in the body of believers, just like the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this is what we need today. So after his grandfather went to sleep, he laid his head down on the Torah that he had been learning from. And then he said, this triangle that she taught me, taught me the truth. And he knew this. And he said, the Messiah is coming again. He will then be king and rule Israel. All will know him then, but those who refuse to believe him when he came to the earth the first time will be very sorry forever and ever. Nathan fell a tug at his heart as it had before when he was learning and memorizing and remembering everything that the teacher had taught him. So the room was quiet. As he was lying there, he began to weep. He wept and he said, Oh God, my God, and the God of my fathers, all of this is too much for me to understand. But if it is true that you sent the Messiah to be the Savior, my Savior, please somehow let me know. And then he gave these words that I have to read to you. He said, the teacher told me that the natural man receives not the things of the world. The natural man receives not the things that are spiritual, not of the world, the spiritual things. And he said to God the Father, he knew who he was talking to, he said, I want to know what she taught me because, now listen at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, which things also we speak not in the words which man's own wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things from the word of God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. This is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now this boy that is going to be 13 years old, he said, the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit of God. You will never really understand everything, not until you have the Holy Spirit in your heart to teach you. He is outside now, and he will not come in until you invite the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Then the Holy Spirit will come in. He will be your Savior. The teacher had said, then you will understand these truths. He had prayed and asked God. He knew now that this was the only way anyone could be born again. Now, this is for all of you that's listening today. When his father came in, he had had tears, but he wasn't ashamed of tears anymore. His grandfather was sleeping, and Frida had been sick, their neighbor, and the mother had gone. His grandmother had gone to see Frida. Now, let me tell you what they did. They could hear her husband, Jacob, reading the Bible all day out loud, and she said, I must go see Frida because she's sick. She walks back in after all of this. His dad walks back in, 
and he, they saw the grandfather sleeping. And then the grandmother came in and she said, Frida is better. Jacob doesn't have to read the scriptures anymore. This is what we're to do when someone's sick. And then he said, so grandfather, you're supposed, father, you're supposed to be teaching. But that was a joke. He knew that his grandfather needed the nap. And then he said, we have news for you. We are, have the apartment that we looked at today. We're going to be moving in one week. And then when he told him this, this was the most exciting thing because he said, now we have to buy new furniture and a car. But Nathan was so excited that he was going to live close to his friend Ollie. So we couldn't wait until he saw him. He saw him the next day and he told him that they were going to be living close to each other. His little friend, Ollie, said, Nathan, I have been a coward. I have been a coward. You see, I am an Arab Christian. And he, this was something else where he just couldn't believe what he was listening to because his little friend had taken him to the YMCA to swim and to play. Now they're, he's learning something he's never heard before. He said, I wish I had told you sooner. I have been, and Nathan said, oh, I have been longing to hear more about Jesus Christ. And he said, I heard all the things that you have told me in America before I came here. And Nathan, he said, he said, I've, I've got so many questions. He said, why ask questions? He said, just accept Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do is to believe. And he said, if you believe the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you will become a child of God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He said, Nathan, Nathan said, I asked God somehow to let me know if the Messiah did really come to earth and died for my sins. Perhaps my friend Nathan, God wants to tell you right now to believe on him. Oh, Ollie said, please believe. Please believe. He said, let me tell you what happened to my sister. He said, my sister lives in Bethlehem. Her husband became a child of God, accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, but my sister wouldn't. But she got really sick. And when she got really sick, they sent her to the hospital in Bethlehem. And the people were so nice to her, they sent her there to die that she heard the word of God and believed on Jesus Christ. And she tried to tell me, but I wouldn't believe her. But she said that missionary, and I know this hospital and this um, people from America build this hospital there. They take care of any person that comes. It doesn't matter. There's people there from Sudan right now, this awful place where they're being treated so bad. Refugees come from Darfur. They're there. The missionaries are teaching them, and they're hearing these truths. This hospital teaches every person that comes there, and they do it without taking any money if they don't have money. And then he said, listen, he said, it's like this bridge that I want you to see. He said, when you go across a bridge, you expect that bridge to hold you up. That's what Christ does for you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then my sister told me that the inscription on the YMCA, they have one for the Jews, the Gentiles, one for the Jews, one for the Arabs, and one for Christians. And he said, I want you to read this. He said, 
That's our Torah. The Lord our God is one Lord. Then leading him to the other side of the building, he said, I want you to read this. It's in Arabic. And it comes from the Koran. And it says, there is no God but Ali. And then he said, I want you to go to the tower and I want you to look up and see what Christians believe. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now this is John 15, 6. And I read to you before from John 17 that he's the only true God. I am the way. And he said, I told my sister, now you see there's the Jews believe one way, the Arabs believe one way, and the Christians believe one way. And that is, I thought I was really smart. And then my sister said to me, the Christians have the Bible that teaches us there's no other God, no other way for you to get to heaven. And I believed that scripture. She taught me, and this is here for everyone to see. And there's many gods, but there's only one true God. Remember, memorize this Bible verse, and you can never be saved. And he is, he has no beginning and no ending. And he's all-knowing and ever-present. Now he dwells in your body. And this is for every true person in the world. Only one true and living God. And then he looks at Nathan. You see, Nathan, he says, Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's many gods, but he's the only way. And let me tell you something else he says. He said, listen at this Bible verse. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. He's in heaven today preparing a place for us. Then, after he heard this news, he said, maybe someday, but not today. Now that's what you hear many people say, I'm not ready. You can never be ready to accept Christ. He knows your heart. He knows your sin. Accept him today. And then Nathan's 13th birthday came. It came on the Sabbath day. So his mother, his grandmother, and his father came to their house on before on the Sabbath eve before the sun set because they will not drive on the Sabbath day. And on the, they, got to, they ate together with, on the Sabbath eve for their meal together. And they talked for a long time. And then he said, I'm old, an old man now his grandfather, I'm going to bed. And he could see his grandfather getting sick. So he helped him again to try to get his phylacters ready before. And then he showed him again, and he did it perfectly. Then the Sabbath morning was clear, and they met at the welling wall. Every one of the people met at the welling wall. And when he was there, his father wore a, his grandfather wore a different cap. He had one with fur on it. His father just wore a cap like the rabbi, and he had his skull cap on. So he answered all the questions. When he answered all the questions, he got a prayer shawl and put it on. And then after everybody left, they went back to the house to finish to finish all of the ceremony that went with Bar Mitzvah. So he got up and asked questions. He had questions. And now you, you have to hear this, because this young boy, when he got up and stood up to ask the questions, because they could ask any question they wanted to, and this little boy, 13 years old, he said, let me read from one of the books in this Bible. He read, 
And he read, first of all, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He asked the question. He said, tell me, is this from our Bible? And everyone was straining to listen to all that he was saying. And when he read this, Nathan said, my first question, am I reading from your Old Testament? Grandfather shouted, no, no. Rabbi, stop him. He is quoting from the Gentiles' Bible, their New Testament. This is not our Bible. Yes, it is, he said. The rabbi told him that he is referring to Israel here in this Psalm 50, uh, Isaiah 53. But 27 times it says in Isaiah 53, he and not Israel. And now when you read this, he read again. He, t he had to read this. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stri stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. And the hatred that they have for anyone that isn't a Jew, you're going to see this in these lessons. And then Nathan said, bravely, he was wounded for our transgressions. He said, how could these mean Israel? He said, this is impossible. This 13-year-old boy, excuse me if I offend, I have more questions, he said. The rabbi tossed his head angrily. We do not have a real Jew here who has become a man today. We have a spoiled boy that has been listening to the Gentiles. He stomped out of their house, the rabbi did. After the rabbi angrily left the ceremony for Nathan's bar mitzvah, the room was strangely quiet. Then Nathan's grandfather spake. My grandson only asked a question. Why was the rabbi angry? We have to learn more about this next week. You've got to understand how great this story is. The word that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary today.